This time on Engine Masters, camshaft specification gobbledygook explained. And we're gonna show you the power of a small cam versus a big cam. First off, we want to thank Amsoil and Mr. Gasket and Earl's Plumbing for sponsoring this whole shebang because it means me and my buddies get to play with engines. And this time, I'm going to try and make it at least a little bit educational by showing you exactly what is meant by all of the basic camshaft specs. What does lift mean? Duration, lobe separation angle? You're going to find out all of that in the second segment. But first, we're going to baseline an engine here with a smaller camshaft so that later in the show we can tell you what happens with a much bigger camshaft. Our victim today is a 372 cubic inch small block Chevy. Sort of an odd displacement. That's because the entire cylinder block, crank pistons, rods are all aftermarket. It's a Dart SHP block, which has a four and an eighth inch bore, and it's got the same stroke as a 350 Chevy, which is 3.48 inches. That adds up to 372 cubic inches. Don't even ask me what that means in liters. It's got 10 and a half to one compression, squeezing into an airflow research cylinder head that has 195 cc intake runners. That's a really good cylinder head. Up top, we've got the Edelbrock Performer RPM air gap intake manifold. We love that thing. And we love it even more when we stack a one inch carburetor spacer on it. That tends to give it just a little bit more plenum volume. And we've seen that that makes them like to run to a little bit of a higher RPM. We have a Holley 750 CFM XP carburetor. The exhaust headers are one and three quarter inch dyno headers. So the only variable we're gonna have in this entire show is the camshaft. Right now, we have a Comp Cam's XE 276HR in the engine. The duration at 50 is 220 on the intake and 230 on the exhaust. We're going to explain all about what that means in the second half of the show right before we put in a much bigger camshaft. But right now we're going to roll it in the dyno cell, sauce it up with some AMS oil and find out what our baseline is with the cute little camshaft. For this test, what's going to be really important is consistency in the performance of the hydraulic roller lifters that we're using with both camshafts. The thing is with some oils, engine temperature can change the consistency of the oil quite a bit. It thins out as it gets hotter. That's why Amsoil recommended the Dominator racing oil for this application, because it's designed to be very stable regardless of engine temperature. Whoops, there it goes. All right, Steve's got the engine all warmed up, tuned up, ready to go. So we're gonna whack it and find out what it does with the little adorable camshaft. Thing is, we're gonna run this in an RPM range that's way bigger than we normally would for a cam this small. What are we running it from? 3,500 to 7,000. 35 to seven. Or 69 actually. But. A cam of this size, 224 at 50 on the intake, generally does not like 7,000 RPM, but we wanna be able to show what happens with a bigger camshaft. But, Steve's chuckling. He knows what we don't know. What's that? <laughs> Probably that this thing is magic. <laughs> Let's find out. I bet you it is. I think it'll exceed your expectations. Horsepower is basically 5,900 to 6,100 RPM. What we just did is 467 pound-feet of torque in a nice fat area here, right between 4,200 and 4,600. And up at the top, we made 470 horsepower at 6,000 RPM. The good cylinder head carried the airflow higher than Dulcich and I were anticipating. But see, the thing is, if this had a bad head on it, right around here is where it would start to roll over in power. But you can see this is where that curve flattens out 
and is being carried, man, I can't believe it goes all the way to 6,500. Part of that is because with the smaller camshaft, it is closing the intake valve sooner so that it's capturing more compression so it's making good torque. I'm gonna make my prediction and tell you that the bigger cam is gonna make the same torque. At a higher RPM. Mm -hmm. Volumetric efficiency, we'll just be moving it up in the RPM range. That's our final number, this is a happy motor. We're gonna go put the big cam in it and once again, <laughs> we're gonna feel really old because we're gonna go, this was really good. Yeah, but we're all I wrapped up, we're gonna go, cam. I want the 224. I know. <laughs> no, but it really is good. Though. It really is good. I mean, it's a 6500 RPM motor with a 224 cam. And makes 470 horsepower. Yeah, and yep. it's really efficient right all the way well, up there. So. Compare this if the viewer can cast their mind back to our uh, 410 Mopar that has a not very good cylinder head for the engine displacement on it. It has 20 more degrees of camshaft duration, a worse cylinder head, more displacement, and makes 435 horsepower. It makes yeah. 35 less horsepower and than what, a good head with a smaller and cam and less cam displacement. Cam 20, 20 degrees bigger. At 5,800 RPM. Now, granted, the engine's a little bigger, but actually, right. you know, 20 degrees, that's a lot of difference in camshaft. If you have a cylinder head and intake manifold that don't flow a lot of air, you need a lot of camshaft duration to make up for that. And it, it doesn't. It, if, and it doesn't. It just doesn't. And if you have a cylinder head and intake that really are good, you can have less camshaft with better results and it just makes for a happier engine overall. So the lesson there, always buy the best cylinder head you can. So that was the power with our small camshaft and now we're gonna go throw in our big fat hairy camshaft. But what does that really mean? Well, we're talking about the camshaft specs and I'm here to sort of train you on all of that gibberish that I talk about at the beginning of every episode when I'm mentioning cam specs. The first thing you need to know about cam specs is really simple to understand. It's valve lift. Knowing that the cam's job is to open and close the intake and exhaust valves in the engine in time with the four stroke cycle, there's a couple of things that we can do with it in order to make more performance. One of which is lift. Lift describes how far the valve is opened off of the seat in the combustion chamber. For example, a typical street cam, a hot street cam, might have 500 thousandths lift, that's half an inch. A typical mild bracket race, drag race engine might have 750 thousandths of an inch lift, that's three quarters of an inch. Opening the valve more means you can get more air into the engine and make more power, more lift tends to make more power if the cylinder head will support it. Now the next spec is camshaft duration, which is measured in degrees of crankshaft rotation. It means as the engine is spinning, how long is that valve off the seat? For example, short duration, open, closed. Longer duration, open, closed. Think of it as a door. If you open a door and slam it, maybe one person can get through. If you open a door and leave it open for half an hour and then slam it, obviously a whole lot more people get through. It's the same thing here. The longer that valve is open, the more air and fuel you can get into the cylinder, the more power you can make. So the next thing that you need to know is lobe separation angle. Now, if you know that these two lobes on the camshaft are for the same cylinder, you can see that they have an angle to each other. Let's look at it like this. Let's say this is one lobe and this is the other. They can be ground at a different relationship like this, and that is gonna affect the valve opening and closing points, which can be really drastic as far as camshaft performance goes. This is really hard to understand because there's a lot of magic that cam manufacturers can do with the lobe to affect the, that lobe separation angle and where the opening and closing points are on the valves, but here is a general general thing to understand. The tighter the lobe separation angle, the more overlap you tend to have. The wider the lobe separation angle, the less overlap you tend to have. What is overlap? That is the period of time at which both the intake and the exhaust valves are open at the same time. As the piston is coming up on the exhaust stroke, obviously the exhaust valve is open, pushing all those gases out, but the intake valve opens before that piston hits top dead center on the exhaust stroke, and so they're both open at the same time. You get some exhaust reversion into the intake and things like that, and when you have a lot of overlap, that's what makes an engine sound really racy. That's that like really ratty sounding camshaft is due to a lot of overlap. Now, a lot of overlap with a tight lobe separation angle tends to favor really strong mid-range and high RPM power. A wide lobe separation angle with less overlap tends to favor lower RPM power. So this is something you shouldn't worry about too much. 
If you get a shelf cam, meaning one that's just offered in the catalog, they will have dialed this in for you. Basically, Comp Cams grinds all their street stuff on a 110 degree lobe separation angle, and you'll see racier stuff will be into like 105, 108, and tamer stuff or things designed for EFI tend to be in the range of 112 to 115. Those are the specs of what we call big cams and small cams, but you don't need to know any of that because right now you're gonna see the real world example of how it affects your engine. The cam that we just took out the duration number at 50,000's tappet lift is 224 on the intake, 230 on the exhaust. It has 502 lift on the intake, 510 on the exhaust. It's on 110 degree lobe separation angle. Now the cam that we're about to throw in is a lot bigger. The intake duration at 50,000's tappet lift is 242. 18 degrees bigger than the 224, which is a big change. And on the exhaust side, it's got 250 degrees of duration at 50 thousandths tap at lift, which is 20 more than this one at 230. That's a big change. The lift is significantly different also. Instead of 502 and 510, it has 558 thousandths of an inch of lift on both the intake and the exhaust sides. However, it is ground on the same lobe separation angle of 110 degrees. So after all that gibberish, let's just go throw the thing in the engine and find out how much power it makes. Okay, cam swap. Oh wow, this thing has stud girdles on it. Oh, oh. Well, we don't need to put that back on, do we? Brulee. <laughs> So we're gonna change the camshaft as fast as we can here, which involves uh, popping all the rocker arms off, taking all the valve train out, taking off the intake manifold, removing the water pump, removing the damper. Fortunately, we have a two-piece uh, front cover, which is gonna save us time, because it means we don't have to drop the oil pan also. Done this a zillion times, and it's always just a time suck. This is always the best part. Once again, we had Brulee warm this thing up, so he knows the answer, we don't know the answer. I love it. I know. That, that's one of the few times that I do and you don't. Right. What we're looking at here is the difference between the small cam on the red line and the big cam on the black line. And you can see, as one would expect, the smaller cam is making more power below 4,500 RPM. But from that point up, the big cam takes over. And the thing is, it's continuing to make power as RPM climb, instead of sort of flattening out in here and taking a dive. Although, really, the change in the shape of the curve isn't as different as I had sort of hoped. So with the bigger cam, we made 507.9 horsepower at 6,400, 6,500 RPM, and the torque peak was 472.2 at 4,800 RPM. As you know, the theory goes, it's proven, the smaller cam favors low RPM performance, and the larger camshaft duration favors high RPM performance, the pivot point being about 4,500 RPM. And there's a lot of people who go, oh, well, that's only where I ever drive my car anyway, which is true unless you're racing. Yeah. You know? Well, I think it's obvious that if it was a street car and truly just a daily driver, the, the small cam is, is much nicer. But, you know, that big cam would almost make you want to go racing. Oh, no. Look I know. That thing, I mean, that's way, way, way bigger. Yeah. It would make you want to accelerate. About 38 horsepower. The acceleration that you're getting from 4,500 all the way up is just well, incredible. See, and, th and theoretically, if we ran this low enough, maybe down to 2,000, it would almost look like an X. But, right. but realistically, you don't drive anything at 2,000. So all that's, uh, you know, just an unused RPM range. So yes. Well, when you say that, you don't drive anything at wide, wide open throttle, throttle at 2,000. 2000. Yeah. You're right. Which one of you guys owns the theory of torque potential? I think we both do, kind of. Yeah. I mean, we've I talked about it through it, our but testing. Did you invent it? Here's yeah, the theory of torque potential. So for 
Every given displacement cylinder head intake manifold, you know, amount of airflow, the theory is there's a certain amount of torque the engine's gonna make regardless of the camshaft unless you go to the extremes yeah. on the curve. Right. And that's what we saw here. The gain in torque is not much at all. It's like two or three pound feet, but the RPM at peak torque is higher. And that's part of the reason that it makes more horsepower is that because horsepower is a function of torque and RPM, anytime you can be making more torque at higher RPM, you are therefore making more horsepower. So when you're moving the engine's entire power curve up, you're making more horsepower. Look at Formula One stuff that's really tiny, probably doesn't make much torque, but or at one point in time, but they would rev 18,000 RPM and make 800 horsepower. Right, right. So it's all engine speed. Smaller camshaft, obviously, Better on the street, bigger camshaft, better on the track. Yeah, and maybe it, for somebody there's something in between, 230, 236, oh, yeah. Yeah. or something like that that's kind of a compromise of both, where it's still got idle vacuum, where you can have power brakes and those sort of things, but still gives you a little more peak power, so it's a little faster. That's picture perfect on what this test was supposed to be, I think. Sometimes yeah. it turns out the way we meant it to. <laughs> okay, that's a wrap for the day. Yeah. Great job, guys. Dulcich, the internet's gonna go nuts when they find out that bigger cams make more power. <laughs> I know, <laughs> we're just geniuses. Once again at Engine Masters. Well, it's not like I was trying to prove anything with this, I was more trying to train people on stuff, but I learned something really significant that's gonna alter my life. Me too. What? You go first. Good cylinder heads with a tiny camshaft are a pretty good thing. And big camshafts with good heads make a lot of power, but if you had junk heads, you probably wouldn't have seen that much difference. I know. Horsepower. We've seen that before on uh, on Engine Masters, especially with that small block Mopar we keep talking about. The head on it is just limiting. It's got a huge camshaft. I'd much rather have the tiny camshaft and the massive cylinder head. I know we're supposed to be testing camshafts where we're raving about how great the cylinder heads are. I know. Well, do you realize this 372 makes more power than a couple of the 408s that we've tested? Oh yeah, by a large margin on some of them. <laughs> it's pretty good. So that's the thing I really like about Engine Masters is that we always set out to do one thing and, and this time it was really obvious. It was just basics. What does a small cam do? What does a big cam do? But we always learn something and to me that was the big takeaway here. Always get the best cylinder head you can yeah. and you'll have a way better engine. Spend money. That's our message here on Engine Masters. <laughs> Fester cash. Your thing will make more power because that's what you need in your life is more power and we'll give it to you every time on Engine Masters. you would see that they have a relationship somewhat like this. This being one lobe, this being the other. Now, boy, I hate myself right now. <coughs> I'm the one that's sick. How come you guys are hacking? Well, mine's from 50 years of smoking. smoking. His is no reason. <laughs> I don't know, it's just being social. <laughs> just trying to fit in? Yeah. You know, when I was very young, there was a company that we did some work for, it was a molybdenum mine. They had that in the 1800s? Wow. <laughs> it's actually back in the 80s. Okay, let's call that a day. <laughs> <laughs>